Most every weekday morning for the last eight months, I've taken the 735 number six bus from the corner of 57th and Stony Island. If you'd hopped on the number six any morning this winter, you'd spy me sitting in my normal spot, the window seat right behind the rear exit. The bus is packed, my earphones are in, the air is always too hot. The Kenwood Academy kids are just ahead of me, filling up the middle of the bus, and the older ladies with their bags are ahead of them, just behind the driver. To my back left, a man with long dreads and an iPad who works every day on a cartoon of a woman. And then across from me, the girl with the combat boots and two coffee cups and an art institute tote. Noticing them is as regular a part of my morning routine as a K-cup when I get to the office. And their absence has been suffocating these last few weeks. Not least because this morning, their replacement was a man who walked up and down the bus, touching every seat, coughing all over the place, and pissing off the driver, who kicks him off at the next stop. My favorite coworker texted me. I have forgotten to dress myself due to all the pajama outfits I've been wearing. Reply, my loft pants too snug around my waist. I want to wear sweatpants. Yes, she says. Look back at this man and then down at my phone. LOL, I'm so anxious right now on the bus, I don't want to come in. I include LOL as if somehow this man coughing all over the bus in the middle of the pandemic is just a normal part of the CTA experience. Yeah, the anxiety is real, my friend texts me. Take some belly breaths with your mouth wide open. Put my phone down. One hand on my belly, I breathe deep and long and feel my pulse slow. My belly and my lungs send a message to my brain. Calm down, slow down. The day is not lost, you are not lost. Breathe, breathe. It seems that during this, the longest Lent of our lives, I have forgotten how to breathe. I find my perfectly healthy lungs to be untrustworthy in the midst of my anxiety. And then I feel angry or guilty or something for possessing the gift of healthy lungs, while thousands of others across the world, their lungs are inflamed and bloodied and hurting. As I read the news or pray for my patients or lie awake in my bed, my breaths are short. And I don't know about you all, but the one constant of my past weeks has been this persistent anxiety, a tight chest, a racing mind. And I felt unable and sometimes afraid to take in the air. I've been afraid of what the vulnerable are inhaling, the sick, the imprisoned, the elderly, none of whom deserve this poison. I'm scared that I am scared. I'm grieving for those who are suffering and I am angry that I feel helpless. But then this morning, the spirit that is the breath of God in this world spoke to me. My friend reminded me the stuff I'm made of, of who God made me to be. She, my friend, the spirit, reminded me of what I do have power over, my breath, which is the stuff of God. Our ancient stories tell us that when God created this world, God gathered dust from the earth and breathed into it. The breath of life fills each creature, whoever has and ever will dwell upon this earth. Each person is filled with holy wind. And our prophets remind us over and over that we hold the breath of God within us. Young Elihu tells the suffering Job and his suffering friends that it is the breath of the Almighty within us that makes for understanding and that gives life. And Ezekiel describes how God breathes life into dry bones, into dead flesh. And God promises us, my spirit will give you breath and you will live again. Of course, Jesus, before he left this world, promised us a spirit, the breath of God, who would protect us, advocate for us, and be God within us.
And friends, I believe this is true. In the midst of panic, of crisis, of pain, the Spirit of God has not left us. God is and is in the air we breathe. Each of us is a holy thing, designed and loved by a God who has imparted God's self into our bodies and souls. And so when I practice these deep breaths over and over today, I try to remind myself I'm not alone. Each of you, no matter where you are, no matter where you live, you are not alone. The breath of God is inside you. The love of God is with you, and you and this world have not been forsaken. The God of Holy Week is not just the rejoicing God of Easter. God is there for Good Friday when the earth quakes, when darkness falls, and the people cry out. God hears us when we cry out in anger. God weeps alongside us. God cries out when we cry that we've been left behind. God is angry alongside us at the pain that our brothers and sisters feel. But God does not leave us. God is within us and will be with us as the world hurts and then grows again. God does not leave us. I can believe these things are true and I know that I will still cry and I will still worry. There will be dark days ahead. My lungs will still get tight. But I can remind myself that I breathe the breath of God in this world when I practice it, I can feel peace. I can breathe. I can touch my belly, take air into my lungs. As I inhale, I can ask my body to be slow, to be steady, to keep breathing. Amen.